Hello, my name is Brian Bailey, and today I'm presenting on nature's tug of war, synergistic versus opposing cellular signals. The best example of this back and forth yin and yang is program cell death, or PCD. PCD culminates in the death of a cell by apoptosis, where the remains of the cell are absorbed into its surrounding cells. Neuronal PCD was first noticed in 1889 by Dr. John Beard, who would later go on to become a very influential, yet relatively unknown biologist. The reason he was able to see programmed cell death, even with the limited technology available at the time, is because some populations of neurons get reduced by 50% or more soon after they make synaptic connections. PCD serves many purposes in the developing organism. It ensures the death of any neurons that attempt to innervate the incorrect target, it guarantees that there will eventually be an appropriate ratio between target cells and the number of neurons trying to innervate them. It allows the organism to produce extra neurons to assure all targets are innovated. And finally, like we discussed in class, it can also help to build structures that would be impossible to make without PCD. PCD even helps to eliminate signaling centers like the anterior neural ridge after their purpose is fulfilled. In fact, PCD is so important that it is necessary for the survival of more complex organisms. Our favorite worm, the C. elegans, appears normal and healthy if it lacks the said three genes, which are required for PCD. However, if you knock out the equivalent genes in both flies and mice, they show extreme defects and generally do not survive long. In class, we talked about the basic neurotrophic theory of PCD. In that theory, Excess neurons are produced, then they compete for a limited amount of survival signals given by neurotrophins like NGF and other molecules. If a neuron doesn't receive enough survival signals, it undergoes programmed cell death. These neurotrophins bind to tyrosine kinase receptors, TERK, and suppress an intrinsic cell suicide program by using phosphorylation to start a downstream process. The intrinsic cell suicide program can also be upregulated by other cellular signals. The battle between the default suicide program of the cell and the process started by survival factors is the back and forth between synergistic and opposing cellular signals. This is where transcription factor cascades come in, with a light side and a dark side each fighting to enforce life or death. This process is highly conserved throughout the animal kingdom so there are parallel PCD pathways in most organisms. From the dark side, pro-apoptotic gene expression is upregulated by transcription factors for EGL1, and for the light side, anti-apoptotic gene expression is upregulated by transcription factors for SED9. This SED9 gene is the break for the cellular suicide program. If it is knocked out, many cells lose the fight against the dark side and die. There is a mammalian equivalent of SED9 called BCL2, which is relevant to current cancer research. So far, we've seen that PCD is an essential process in complex organisms. Worms can survive without it, but even something as lowly complex as a fly or a mouse will die without it. It helps to build complex structures and govern the ratio between neurons and their targets. The neurotrophic theory states that a surplus of neurons compete for a limited supply of survival signals. Those signals stop the intrinsic suicide program of the neuron by upregulating anti-apoptotic gene expression. In addition, there is strong evidence that the neurotrophic theory is at least part of how PCD works. For example, if you give neurons excess NGF in vitro, most of them will survive and defeat PCD, at least for a short time. If you instead give in vitro neurons a neutralizing antibody for NGF, almost all the neurons will die quickly. As long as cells in vitro do not produce their own survival factors, like lens cells or cartilage cells, they will not be able to maintain a stable cell population without growth factors from somewhere else. Although the neurotrophic theory is supported by a lot of evidence, it is not the sole cause of programmed cell death. PCD can be triggered in many different ways. Loss of survival signals, like in the neurotrophic theory, growth factor signaling, cell-to-cell -cell interactions, intrinsic transcription factor expression, and probably more. 
The molecular mechanisms of PCD include the intrinsic-extrinsic transcription factor cascades, but PCD also depends on how competent and susceptible a certain cell is to death. Competence is basically which transcription factors or molecules have the ability to express pro- or anti-apoptotic genes. For example, in drosophilia, activation of NOTCH triggers apoptosis in some regions of the body and continues the life of cells in other areas, depending on cell type. Determination of whether NOTCH on or NOTCH off cells survive or die is strictly dependent on cell lineage, suggesting that pro-survival versus pro-death responses to NOTCH are intrinsically determined by another transcription factor cascade that encodes the cell's identity. The decision of cell survival versus cell death in these notch-mediated cells is based on the temporal dynamics of transcription factor expression at the time. In mammals, susceptibility to neuronal apoptosis is controlled at various levels. Protection by growth factor signalings, the amount of IAP protein, the downregulation of apoptosome machinery, and more. All these factors combine to provide a molecular basis for PCD. PCD has been evolutionarily conserved from worms to humans. In fact, it has been conserved for all metazoan organisms. It is also not limited to use in the nervous system. In fact, it can be seen in most cell types in the human body. To summarize, PCD is a vital process in many organisms. It serves many purposes like building and controlling cell numbers. It is an extremely complex process that depends on timing, cell lineage, and the amount of survival factors available to a cell. PCD is something that serves as a failsafe for a developing organism, making sure things go according to plan. Thank you very much for listening.